Hello friends, uh, welcome back to Merstack. So today uh, we are starting the new end-to-end -end training on the integration tool called Adaptia Integration Shoot. So why we're talking about this tool right now, okay? So this tool is actually a competitor for the other uh, integration tool in the market like MuleSoft, Logic Apps, Dell Bhumi, Cast and IBM and other tools, okay? So today's agenda is we'll, we'll overview this tool and then we'll see the architecture behind this tool. We'll talk about the core components involved. We'll talk about uh, what are the, what types of user defined. Then we'll see uh, the uh, deployment process. Once I develop something in the development environment, how to migrate it to a next environment. So let me start with the overview. So this tool comes with the hybrid uh, version. So cloud plus on-premises, uh, um, so on-premise, they call it uh, uh, connect to server and for cloud-based, they call it connect portal. Okay. This is completely Java-based application designed using J2W framework. And uh, when you run the process flow, the data travels in the form of XML from one activity to other activity during the course of the execution. So the core data format uh, is the XML. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the architecture. So this tool follows the three layer architecture. First one is the UI layer. Uh, we call it presentation. So UI layer is completely web based through browser. You can access anything. So this can be used by business users and developers from anywhere at any time. Okay. Second layer is application layer where actual business logic runs. So this layer provides the runtime uh, engine for, you know, for the process flow to run. Okay. Uh, third layer is the data access layer. So everything in the, in this tool stored in the database, so whatever activities we create, whatever uh, logs getting generated, uh, runtime logs, everything getting stored in the uh, database. Okay. So um, here we can use any database, but with the Adaptia embedded database comes that is SQL database. Uh, if you don't want to use the outside database, we can use the SQL uh, but definitely there will be a memory constraints in that uh, embedded uh, database. So let's talk about the core components involved. So uh, there are multiple components, but I have listed down the major one. So the first part is the web runner at the UI level. I said like web runner uh, involves. So web runner, uh, it handles all the re user requests like uh, creating, editing, deleting activities through UI. And then uh, second one is the kernel. So it's a runtime environment for the AIs. It handles all the objects that are exhibiting like uh, process flow, scheduling events, uh, queue processing, and uh, process flow recoveries. Okay. Third component uh, is a really important. That one is the database where uh, all the, uh, and as I said, by default, uh, SQL DB is embedded with the FTI if you don't want to use the outside one. So uh, while installing, we'll see that uh, in the steps, I'll show you uh, where to configure that. So two databases are really important here, backend and the log. So backend database stores uh, all the uh, activities uh, created through UI and log database stores the runtime logs like process flow logs, runtime uh, event logs. Okay. And then uh, one more core component is the shared location. So what are those like uh, the repository folder? So in the repository folder, um, intermediate data, intermediate data. So I, as I said, right from one activity to other activity data travels that in between it will get, uh, you know, uh, transformed to intermediate uh, format and that data, that stream will be stored as a, a XML file in the, in the repository folder. Then comes the recovery folder. Recovery folder, it stores the current state of the, you know, process flow. And uh, whenever, you know, process flow uh, aborts due to kernel shutdown, uh, it stores the current state in the, in the recovery file. Whenever the kernel comes up and running, it takes the recovery file and then loads the uh, state of the process flow and start running. In the rerun folder, uh, in the in the in the process flow, you can use multiple checkpoints. So after execution, successful execution of the checkpoint, uh, the process flow stores its current state uh, to the uh, rerun file. Okay. So whenever there is a failure uh, in any data failure, it can failure with the multiple uh, uh, reasons, right? Uh, its connectivity is uh, database connectivity is down or the data uh, data errors are there. So schema because of schema 
uh, it failed okay so during this time if you want to rerun the process then it uh, picks the rerun file means it, it stored the store uh, reload the current state of the last uh, successful checkpoint and from there it start uh, resuming the process In, instead of running uh, complete process again we can start from the last successful checkpoint okay so those were the, the core components then there are uh, uh, um, uh, different kind of users defined so there are four basically so admin is like a super user if this admin user creates other users and group admin is like it it, it manages uh, the users um, among that group developer uh, is a category where um, uh, this kind of users design and develop the process flow in the uh, web uh, web uh, uh, process flow designer a business users are uh, uh, basically kind of support users they monitors the execution of the process flows they take care of the environment so these are the main uh, four types of users uh, defined in the adaptive suit then comes the the deployment model so there are actually there are three types of uh, um, activities involved in this migration process so once you deep, uh, once you develop and uh, test it uh, once you are um, sure that the code is fine you export it as a zip so uh, that is the first option once you export it you can either promote it to a next environment or you can deploy it to a next environment so promote option is nothing but you are you are uh, making few changes right if you are fixing a bug and you are changing only one activity if you want to migrate that one activity only then you can use the promote option with a retain.xml so retain.xml will, will be having the information about the 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 uh, what activity you want to retain and what activity uh, you want to you know uh, migrate to the next environment that information uh, uh, stays in the retain.xml and deploy is like uh, once you, once you once you export or promote you will get a zip that zip you can use and uh, use the deploy option to migrate it to the next environment so that is what the deployment uh, uh, process involved let me show you how we can install this and then uh, how we look for the those folders so let me uh, take you to the um, location so here from here with this uh, from this location you can uh, download so you can go for windows 64 bit once you download this it's like around uh, 714 mb once you in, i mean download this uh, uh, once you download this you can unzip it in this folder c folder and from here you can uh, use the installed uh, uh, executable and e you need to follow some instructions uh, so they have already provided adaptive already provided the instructions so for windows uh, they have separate instructions so from here you need to look for the uh, uh, prerequisite so you need to have proper java version um, uh, the memory size that prerequisite uh, we need to see and once you unzip right you will see all these uh, files there and uh, once you click in install.exe so you you'll see these options these options uh, these options and uh, you can you have two options here express and custom so if you want to just evaluate the product you can go for this if you want to do the development qa and production you need to use a custom so once you use a custom uh, you can go for the embedded uh, database that uh, that's what i said hsql uh, db so hsql db you can see it here uh, that is bounded with the adaptive suit uh, if you want to go for other uh, then um, uh, you can go for any oracle ms sql or mysql so i have configured ms sql i will show you how the tables are getting generated once this adaptia suit is installed and if you are upgrading the already installed adaptia then you need to choose the the using use uh, existing table uh, option and so there are two databases i was talking about the backend database and the log database so in the same db server you can run both the databases okay so here also you can choose if you are going first time then create new tables if you are upgrading then go for the uh, use existing tables uh, they once you install once you install uh, the then there will be two uh, uh, services windows service will get be created a kernel and web uh, web runner i'll show you those so 
So as I said, once you uh, installation is done, you can see uh, Adaptia Shoot Kernel and the web web service. Uh, Sorry, uh, web runner uh, services are running. So web runner take care of all the UI request and the web console, and a kernel actually provides the environment where you can run the process flow. So these are the two important thing. Then let me show you how database uh, uh, looks. Or uh, before that, let me show you the console first. So this is how the console looks like. You can see it's running on. Okay, let me show you one thing one quickly. So once you uh, install, right? Once installation is done, so there is a kernel and web runner for Windows, and then this is the URL you'll get it. Okay, since you are uh, installing local host, it will be it console runs on the eight zero eight zero, and uh, it will ask for the user and password. So that is uh, the default admin and Indigo one. You can go with it. No, no need to create new. If you want to create new users, you can create it. But we 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 can use this default one. Okay. So this is how the uh, web console looks like. So here you can see all the uh, activities. We'll we'll explore this in the next coming session. Uh, then let's go to the uh, database. So as I said, like there were two databases will be created. So this is the backend database where everything whatever we are creating from the UI will get stored. So these many data, uh, I mean uh, database tables will be created from the installation. So one of them is like a advanced database source, advanced database target. So whichever activity you create from the UI, uh, it will go. It will get stored here. So we have TP events and all those. Okay. One more database uh, was created as part of installation that log database. So here also you can see the tables. Okay. You can see all transaction related uh, data will get stored here. Event log. Or you know transaction log, you can see transaction data. Transaction data is nothing but the process flow data. Okay, transaction logs, all those uh, information will get stored in this table, uh, in this database, these tables. Okay, um, uh, that's all from this session. So hope you liked it. Uh, I'll be coming up with the use cases and more videos uh, as part of this training. So please uh, subscribe the channel if you're not done. Please hit the you know, bell icon so that you can get notifications whenever I upload the videos. And share with the friends. Uh, uh, thank you for watching.